Next up, from Colorado, another Lisa. From the Harm Reduction Action Center, Lisa Ravel. Thank you very much. My name is Lisa Rayville. I'm the Executive Director of the Harm Reduction Action Center. We're Colorado's largest syringe access provider and harm reduction policy leaders at the state capitol. When's the last time you had an International Drug Policy Alliance down the street from your house? <laughs> Colorado's done a lot in the last few years. We are a trifecta of winners. However, there is a lot yet to be done. I would be remiss if I didn't bring up our friends, the Colorado Criminal Justice Reform Coalition, who passed the most progressive drug sentencing legislation in the United States this past year. Of course, you may have heard that we also passed marijuana, and Mason Tavert and Brian Vicente have been very supportive. Brian Vicente is a Harm Reduction Action Center board member. We had to snap him up right away to make that happen. And of course, harm reduction policies have been making it happen in the state capitol over the last few years. It's so important for the streets to influence the policy at the capitol. As a direct service provider, it was getting increasingly difficult to have, to have to work under archaic drug policies and legislators telling us what we needed to do. We actually needed to tell legislators what we needed and we went ahead and passed that. So while we passed pot this past year, syringe access was passed in 2010 and bless Colorado's heart, they thought we were being so revolutionary. Like we were just trying to catch up with the rest of the world. In the last three years, we've been able to pass syringe access programming, 911 Good Samaritan Law, keeping people alive in the event of an overdose. Third party naloxone, because not only do people that use drugs need to have access to naloxone, those of us that love drug users, we also need access to naloxone as well. We were able to get a syringe exemption for those folks to be able to uh, participate in syringe access programs and dis dispose properly. In Denver County right now, if you are not part of a syringe access program, you are running eight to 15 days in county jail per syringe, clean or used, which almost promotes improper syringe disposal. And of course, just a couple weeks ago, we finally got mobile syringe exchange going as well. So we're wrapping that up around here. So while two blocks away at the state capitol, and I really apologize, they covered it up for you, and we haven't seen it for about a year and a half. But two blocks away at the state capitol, things go really well for us. However, a mile west where we're located, the barriers of stigma have been out of control. That's the common theme that I've heard here today too, the whole conference is stigma. We've been an agency for 11 years, but we would be able to do syringe access as of last year. Zoning started looking into us, and you know when zoning looks into you, there's always a problem. And so they said you needed to move locations, and then you could begin syringe access. Great, we were in 950 square feet. We wanted to be 4,000 square feet, like Boom Health or something like that. Eight months, seven realtors, and 40 spaces denying us later, we're now in a cozy, intimate storefront, 650 square feet in the Arts District over on Santa Fe. But it didn't stop there because the Santa Fe Arts District found no correlation between art and drug use. <laughs> so of course we had to do a good neighbor agreement and we can do nine to noon Monday through Friday for syringe access because is that the best time to serve those in our community? No, it's just before art buyers go out and go to the galleries. So there continues to be issues because I had to sign a good neighbor agreement and basically I'm in charge of everything going on in about a mile radius of there. I do especially appreciate the march that happened a couple days ago, especially on 16th Street Mall. I'm not sure if you knew, but the Downtown Denver Business Partnership worked in collaboration with the mayor to basically criminalize homelessness in the city of Denver. If you appear homeless and you sleep on the streets at night and you have a covering over you, such as a blanket or a tarp, you could be arrested. They will potentially not let me do syringe access on the 16th Street Mall. So it was very powerful that we were able to do a march to make that happen. Thank you, thank you. Because sometimes Denver and Colorado in general think syringe access and harm reduction and criminal justice reform are just a few little nutties over on the side, but we're actually making things happen. So as we continue to push forward with laws to implement those to protect those that we serve, we all know if you're not angry, you're not paying attention. Thank you.
Thank you, Lisa. The fight has to continue for human rights of everybody. And even when we win a big victory here in Colorado, Alicia shows there's a lot more fights still to be fought and won.